You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Hi, this is Roy Thomas, and you're listening to the Epic Marvel Podcast. Hello, this is the Epic Marvel Podcast, and you're listening to Black Widow, Episode 1. This is covering a period of Black Widow from 1964, right from the very beginning, her first appearance in Tales of Suspense, all the way to 1970. Uh, I am your host, Curtis Findlay. Uh, I'm Pierce Haley. I'm your co-host for our Black Widow episode of Epic Marvel Podcast. And we will be talking about at least excerpts of a very great many issues here yes we have uh tales of suspense 52 53 57 60 and 64 avengers 16 29 30 32 33 36 37 38 39 41 <laughs> 42 43 44 45 46 47 57 63 64 and 76 oh, on this man. episode. <laughs> <laughs> and before you uh, are worried about this, this is not going to be a four-hour episode. In fact, most of these, <laughs> uh, most of those Avengers issues are just excerpts. They're just like four or five pages. Um, I guess we should explain for the people who don't know, we are following the the Black Widow Epic Collection Volume 1. The Epic Collections, if you haven't heard of them before, these are Marvel's uh, trade paperbacks uh, in which they collect the entire series of a character from the very first appearance all the way to, you know, who knows, they don't really have stopping points at the moment. Um, in this, and most of it is like, you know, if it's Avengers, it starts at Avengers number one and carries through to Avengers number 400 and something uh, with like 20 plus volumes in the series. For Black Widow, however, because she never really starred in her own series, we uh, they have collected all of her earliest appearances, which is that big long list that Pierce that you just read just now. Uh, Black Widow scrapbook. Yeah, scrapbook is a good... Yeah, they really just did cut and paste a whole lot and stick it into here. And uh, and we're going to go through this issue by issue. We will spend more time on some of the full issues and less time on the excerpts. So I'm hoping that we can kind of talk all about this in, you know, an hour and a half or so. The, the Epic Collection actually stretches all the way through to 1971 and covers her... Her actual ongoing series, she had a segment in Amazing Adventures, but we're going to save that stuff for the second episode. So we're only going to be talking about her early adventures in Tales of Suspense and Avengers. All right. Uh, What's your connection with Black Widow, Pierce? Well, she's not my favorite character. I I, I have mixed feelings about her. I, I, I tend to like a character with more heart. Black Widow is very cold and uh, uh-huh. yeah. mission focused. You know, she's not a very emotional character at all. But uh, for an early Silver Age character, you know, she has a lot of agency for a female character more than you see. More than like Invisible very, Woman. Very or... Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah. Or Wasp, even. She, she's definitely got her strengths. She's got yeah. her admirable qualities. And I, I like seeing her evolve. She goes through a, a great deal of uh, character development. Yeah, she sure does. In this one volume, it's like she goes from just a one-off character that was probably never meant to be seen again to a um, like a femme fatale 1970s action heroine. It, it's pretty kind of cool to see how that all transpired. And I've got my own thoughts on how they've handled the character in these early years, and I'm sure you do too. And so we'll bring that all to the table and uh, and see where it all lands. All right. Uh, there will be also a, converse, a little bit of a conversation about Captain Marvel number 12. They didn't include that in the Epic Collection, but I think it's worth talking about. And I told P- you, Pierce, that you should read this one as well for our episode today. And sure. so, yeah, we'll talk about that when it falls into its place and continuity as we go along. 
Um, I did not ask for people to leave their comments on this volume. I, I, I forgot. So uh, we'll leave those. We'll leave that segment for the next episode. We'll talk about that. Uh, I'll make sure I put a post up on Facebook or something to get those comments, and we'll deal with that next time. Nice to hear opinions. Okay, well, let's get right to it. We're going to start at the very beginning. This is Tales of Suspense, number 52, uh, the first appearance of Black Widow. And if you're not familiar with the 1960s books, the way Marvel did it is they had a very limited number of titles that they were allowed to ship per month. Uh, that was controlled by their distribution company, uh, they, which was actually owned by DC Comics. And so they really, really limited, because Marvel was their competition, how many books they could do. So to get around that, Marvel would split their books into two. And so Tales of Suspense was a book that featured half of uh, the story, half of the issue was Iron Man, and, uh, at the, and the other half of the issue was Captain America. Although at the time, I don't think that Captain America was part of this book. He came a little bit later. So these pages are these stories, these early tales of suspense stories are only about 10 pages long. They're short, they're concise, they're to the point. And because of that, we don't get a whole lot of really in-depth character development from Iron Man or any of these characters, really. It's just uh, it's just like set up the plot and kind of resolve it as quickly as you can. It's very to the point. And so in this issue, Russians, uh, who were the, uh, the main atag- antagonists for Iron Man in these early days, the Russians send these two agents to America to take out Tony Stark. And that's really mm-hmm. all that is. That's the whole yeah. plot. Crimson Dynamo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Crimson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Crimson Dynamo is there, too. Um, so this is the first appearance of Black Widow. What did you think of this issue, Pierce? Uh, well, I absolutely love our first appearance of Natasha here on page nine. She's in the middle panel. She just just said at a glance, you can tell she's such a femme fatale. You, you can just infer so much about the character just from this picture of her, you know, dressed in her classy evening gown and her little fur wrap and her <laughs> Yeah, with the little veil, she's just she just looks dangerous, beautiful and dangerous. So I just love it. She's like a she's like a femme fatale from from old school detective movie, you know, like Maltese Falcon or something. Totally, yeah, definitely has that look. I I love how glamorous that she she is because this is she only has this appearance for a few issues and then she gets a costume, and mm-hmm. and it's just. It's nice. It's it's so different. I I wasn't expecting it, especially if you're familiar with the you know the Black Widow from the movies, or for, if you grew up in the '80s and '90s and beyond. So like this is definitely not the Black Widow we're used to. Right. Right. I kind of think that this was really only just a one-off character, and the reason is they named these two Russian agents Boris and Natasha. <laughs> they and sure did. <laughs> those, yeah, and that's those are the famous antagonists from the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoon from the fifties. And so I kind of think that these two were just kind of a, a you know a joke character. They're Russian You're stereotypes. Right. They're <laughs> they they were just kind of <laughs> one and done. But something clicked with either Stanley or Don Heck. Or both, and they brought her back um, in the very next. Well, the very next issue is kind of the continuation of the story, but they'll bring her back um, a, a little bit later on. Black Widow is only used as a distraction in this issue. She's uh, that's that's it. She's there for her good looks. She's there to to turn Tony's head in one direction so that Boris can can do the dirty work in the other one. So it's very much a uh, um, a product of its time in that sense that you know beautiful woman walks into the room and Tony Stark can't help but notice and that kind of thing. He he is a little bit dense when it comes to women. You know, he doesn't even (laughs) think for a minute. I wonder if she's dangerous. You know, is it odd that she just shows up like this? Yep. (laughs) Uh, And at the end of the issue, she goes into hiding. She kind of escapes and goes into hiding. And that kind of leads us into the very next issue, which is issue number 53. And it's called The Black Widow Strikes Again. So they put her name front and center then. Yeah, and this is before the days of the internet, so they wouldn't have even known if Black Widow was a popular character or not. She just had enough of an interesting personality or something, or, you know, Don Heck is great at drawing beautiful women, so maybe he just wanted to draw her some more. (laughs) Um, 
but she's back. And in this one, Black Widow pretends to befriend, befriend Stark again, uh, saying that she's, you know, she's turning away from the Russians and everything. And uh, But only so that she can steal an invention of his to get back in the Russian good graces, because she knows that the Russians are going to kill her because she uh, she ran away. Right. She needs to come in out of the cold. Um, any thoughts on this issue here? Well, I, I kind of love that... Uh... You know, again, with the Silver Age, you don't usually see female characters with a whole lot of agency. And I, I, I kind of love that she's a little more in charge this time and uh, that it was the she didn't mess up. You know, she failed because the the guys that she didn't want who were sent to help her messed it up for. Her. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's a good point. And she does a heck of a lot more in this issue than she does in the last. She is yeah, yeah, very active very active she takes matters and once she gets that weapon especially she's like tearing down buildings and throwing things at iron man and she can hold her own um which is like you know necessary because she doesn't have any other powers of her own so she has to to use this weapon but and she's still there doing it all in her fur coat and <laughs> in her, yeah. her short with the, and... with the cigarette and the holder you yeah know, that's yeah. such a vampir villainous totally thing is the cigarette holder <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Uh, but the thing also is that she's she's very, very concerned with wealth and jewels. That's kind of what her motivation is. Uh, another, you know, typical thing for women in the, the 60s or the way that men are writing right. her, that, that she's she's very obsessed with fashion and the way she looks and um, the accoutre- accoutrements that come along with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that would bug me. The stereotyping would bother me if it were written now, but... You know, we're reading something from the 60s. Yep. I'm just looking more at what they got right than what they got wrong, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't think that you can fault them in that sense for for writing the women the way that they write them because that was just kind of it was commonplace and they i don't know didn't know any better <laughs> so yeah like you said right. <laughs> uh, black widow has definitely changed in the way she's handled uh these days I, I doubt Black Widow today would carry anything about jewels. She wouldn't even want <laughs> jewels if somebody gave them to her. She'd uh-huh. just throw them in her drawer. <laughs> okay, well, we can keep on going here to issue number 57. This is a couple more months down the road here. Uh, and this issue features another first appearance by someone who is very important in these early days of Black Widow. Uh, it's Hawkeye. Hawkeye. And this issue is right called Hawkeye the Marksman. Do you want to give us a brief description of what this issue is about? Sure. Um, well, it starts. Uh, Tony's taking Pepper to Coney Island, and he they see Hawkeye the marksman there. Uh, Tony ends up, or as Iron Man ends up saving the day. Hawkeye is jealous of the attention he gets and decides to come up with a costume persona of him, of his own. But he uh, sort of accidentally falls into being a super villain rather than a superhero. Yep. And uh, Black Widow sort of snaps him up and. And manipulates him to kill Iron Man for it. <laughs> <Or> attempt to. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye comes off as very immature in this one, uh, which is he's always kind of a hot-headed guy. Uh, through yeah. his through his early years in the Avengers, he's always butting heads with pretty much anybody that's on the team. And so he's not really a villain. He's just kind of egocentric and mm-hmm. is just thinking of himself. It, it just wants to feel like he matters. Yeah. And Black Widow picks up on that right away and manipulates mm-hmm. him so well. And I feel like this is really where we get the early um, er- early characteristics of Black Widow being a spy, even though she's not written as a spy or anything like that now. Right. Because she's so calculating, you mean? Yep. Yeah. And she, she sees all the angles and she's a good actress and all of this kind of stuff. So... Um, yeah, she does a. It's an interesting thing that they they paired them up right from the get go. Yeah, I, I kind of love the two of them together because there's there's such a contrast. You know, yep. Hawkeye's so hot headed and impulsive, and Black Widow is so calculating, and emotions just don't enter into the equation at all. It is interesting that from this point on, Black Widow is exclusively a side character for Hawkeye's storyline now. Um, they, she she only appears to further along Hawkeye's character development. And that's not how it starts off here. It starts off mm-hmm. that Black Widow's the one pulling the strings, but pretty soon the way Stan writes her is that she will fall in love with Hawkeye for real and just kind of dance around his, his adventures. Yeah. Although she... 
she does still have agency. And I, I kind of love this is, uh, I don't know if you want to save this comment for later or not, but later on, even when she falls in love with Hawkeye, she's still thinking he's kind of an idiot. Yeah, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> she's thinking, oh, this fool will believe anything I tell him. But she yeah. does love him. Yeah, I mean, she still retains her agency in, in the fact that it's like if she wants to go out and do something, she will go out and do something. And that's like the whole shield when she gets hooked up with shield later on. Um, mm -hmm. She doesn't consult Hawkeye about it. It's just it's her life. It's her decision. And but it still is the fact that she never appears by herself unless it is in relation to something that Hawkeye is feeling in the pages of Avengers. True. Yeah. Except for that Captain Marvel <laughs> which is, that we're going to get to. Yep, that's right. And, that, and that's one of the reasons why I, I br bring that up there. So um, let's continue with this issue here. Uh, is there anything else you want to say about this first appearance of Hawkeye or should we move on? Uh, we can move on, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay, so we can move on to... Tales of Suspense number 60. Yeah, this one's called Suspected of Murder. And in this one, Black Widow uses the disappearance of Tony Stark to send Hawkeye to steal plans. It's basically the same plot as the previous issue. Um, I, mean, I mean, not not exactly the same plot, as, but it's like Black Widow's going to pull the strings, so Hawkeye is, it will be sent to do something to, to Iron Man. And right. there's no real plot, really. She has no real plan. She just is like, oh, I see an opportunity and I'm going to capitalize on it. Right. So I, I guess she's still trying to get back into the good graces of the the Soviets. Yeah. And there's not a whole lot other than that. I mean, she doesn't even get her hands dirty in this issue. Uh, Hawkeye is the one who faces off against Iron Man and and Widow's seen at the beginning. And then she's seen in one panel at the very end. And that's about it. Uh, although she here's is... Here's where we confirm that she is actually falling in love with Hawkeye. That's true. Because right at the very end, she does say, uh, will they ever let me see you again? Because she, she does go off. Um, who does she go off with at the end here? Sergey Amkov, head of the Iron Curtain spy system in North America. Okay, so she's going back with the Russians. Yeah. That's right. So she's right. finally... They, yeah, they kind of grab her and take her back. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because they want her back or if they just captured her. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at. So the two of them are separated. And um, a few months go by, and then we are brought to issue number 64 which is Hawkeye, and the new Black Widow strikes again. They make a big point of saying the new Black Widow. So this is the first big turning point for Black Widow's character, from right. being just a, a, a costumeless rogue character to now um, an adventurer, a super adventurer. I mean, now you know you're really a Marvel character when you get a costume. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I will say I'm not in love with this costume i think it makes you look like a magician's assistant no oh, right yeah with the fishnet stockings and uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's even the later one where she gets the the pointier mask and such uh well, i guess this mask is pretty pointy this is the costume she, it, it goes into some variations but she carries on with this costume pretty much through the rest of what we're going to be talking about uh today mm -hmm. um I wonder why they didn't look to the Black Widow spider for inspiration and give her a big old red hourglass. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Black Widow spider, that that's pretty much a naturally occurring superhero costume. You know, it's, it's yeah. striking, it has an emblem on it. It's perfect. It's it works. It's stylish, yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't come for many years later that they'd actually add that into her costume. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's that's so funny. And it's there's nothing Black Widow or spider-ish about it. Um, they they just use the name. I mean, I guess maybe the fishnet stockings are supposed to emulate webs. Webs, yeah. So there's maybe maybe there's that, and she does get some spider-like powers here. The Russians mm -hmm. have outfitted her with uh, some special abilities, including uh, some suction boots, so she can walk on surfaces like um, like walls and ceilings. And she has and a, a special line. yeah special uh, bracelets that have nylon web lines. Uh, sort of like Spider-Man, but not the dissolvable stuff that Spider-Man uses. Right. So that's, yeah, that's interesting that they've given her the abilities here. They're going to make her an actual usable agent. And the first thing she does with her powers is travel to America and find Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Hawkeye. Although now we, we get a shift in the character to being more sympathetic because now she's being forced yeah, to true. kill Iron Man. She doesn't want to anymore, but they, they threaten her parents. 
But what does she do is that she she pulls the strings and forces Hawkeye to kill Iron Man again. <laughs> so yeah. it's like kind of the third time in a row that she that this whole thing has been going on here. Poor guy. And uh, then she berates him at the end for, you know, he could have gone after Iron Man, but he stops to help her instead because she thought she was injured. And she's, you know, you fool, you yeah. had your chance. Yeah. And she, <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> she, she very much sees love as a weakness, even when it benefits her personally. Yeah, and I think, though, it's like she, if there was a chance that she was going to make it out alive, then Iron Man still needed to die. Otherwise, the Russians would come after her. So she's kind of mm-hmm. upset that Hawkeye didn't finish the job. Um, it's interesting to talk about her parents in this issue because that's something I think that they that we have retconned out of the picture in future Yeah, I think they years. they eventually say that they, you know, they just manipulated her to believe that these were her parents brainwasher yeah. or something that yeah. Because at a very young age she was in the red room being mm-hmm. uh, being groomed as an as, as an assassin from a very young age. Um yeah. Yeah, her background evolves quite a bit. Yeah, they really don't go into it at all. She has no origin story in this issue, in this in these early pages. She is just there. She is just a mm-hmm. Russian, and that's about it. Um, and even throughout this book, they don't talk about her origin at all. Um, Not really. Uh, until we get to the... I, I mean, I haven't read the Amazing Avengers issues yet, so I can't say for sure, but in these early Avengers issues and such, yeah, we don't know anything about her origin story. They haven't... When they bring in the Red Guardian, we get a little bit. That's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get to that in a few issues here. Okay, so now we have one page, uh, or a couple pages, of Avengers number 16, pages 7 and 8, Uh, This is the famous issue where the old guard of the Avengers retire and they pass the torch to the new Avengers. And this is when Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver join the team along with Captain America. And we get a flashback where we see that Natasha was injured and the Soviets recaptured her and took her away and Hawkeye doesn't know what happened to her. So this is one of the instances where I'm like, Black Widow only exists to further along Hawkeye's stories because we only get this in a, it, like, it's not even part of the story. It's a flashback. We find out in a flashback that right. Hawkeye thinks that's, that uh, Scarlet, the, that Black Widow's dead. Yeah, that hardly seems fair just to give us, you know, th- three panels of flashback for some pretty, pretty important stuff happening to her. Yeah. Like they, I'm. I, I guess they didn't have really anywhere else to tell that story. That they, they couldn't. Um, I mean, I guess they could try and fit that into another issue of Tales of Suspense or something. But they decided not to. And so this yeah. is all we get is these three panels telling us that Black Widow is now assumed dead, and Hawkeye is going to carry on. And that, and that's all we have to say about Black Widow for a long time. This is issue number yeah. sixteen. It's not till issue number 29 that Black Widow comes back into the picture over a year later. <laughs> and we still don't get much of an explanation for what happened to her. She's <laughs> she's with China now. She got picked up by the Soviets, but for some reason she is now working as a Chinese agent. That's right. And I, I don't understand that. Did, did we miss something? I don't know. I I didn't... As far as I, I am concerned, this is just out of left field. Now... China and Russia did have a kind of a weird relationship politically at this time. They were mm-hmm. both Russian nations and, or I mean, sorry, they were both communist nations. Communist. In fact, they are both communist because of each other, I believe. My, my my history on this part of the world at this time is very, very minimal. So I, I don't really know a whole lot about what was going on. But, but so, yeah, I mean, if, I don't know, maybe Russia lent her out. <laughs> it's like, oh, you need an agent? Here you go. <laughs> you I can mean, use it her. seems awfully chummy, you know, just swap yep. your spies around. Sure, you can have our spies. <laughs> yep. But China has actually just brainwashed her in this issue. Uh, so she doesn't even remember her past or who, who Hawkeye is or anything. And, and she is on a mission. She recruits a couple of characters that um, if you've been reading Avengers, you will know. Uh, Power Man, who is not Luke but Cage. It's not a, Luke Cage. Nope, no. it's a different guy um, who eventually grows up to be, or literally grows up to be a character named Goliath. <laughs> 
Um, and then there's the swordsman. And once again, Hawkeye. So a, a trio of characters who have been villains to the Avengers in the past. Um, and Hawkeye, who is currently an Avengers, an Avenger. And uh, yeah, what is, uh, what's her plan here? What is she supposed to get them to do? Let's see. She wants to take down the Avengers. Yeah. But uh, Okay, I kind of love here on page 90. When Hawkeye says, you mean you've joined forces with them against the Avengers? And she's like, no, they joined me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, not, let's, let's just uh, make sure we know who's in charge here. <laughs> but uh, Hawkeye does not want to uh, go against the Avengers. Yeah. He's not having that plan. And Wasp had followed him because Captain America asked her to. She goes to report back, but she gets knocked out before she can deliver a warning. So, Swordsman and Power Man are attacking the Avengers. They attack Captain America, manage to capture him, and that leaves uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver as the only Avengers right. who are able to respond. Now, I have a theory, and my mm -hmm. theory is that Black Widow is a favorite of Don Hex. Because he's the artist on the early days of uh, Tales of Suspense. Mm -hmm. He's the one who drew her when she first appeared in all those early issues. And then he moves over to Avengers. And I can just imagine, he's like, Stan, can we bring back Black Widow? Uh, and, so, and so they do. They bring her back. And I, th I think that it's kind of because Don Heck really liked it. Because as soon as Don Heck leaves Avengers, which he's on this book for quite a while, as soon as he leaves Avengers... Black Widow goes in a very different direction. And that's partly because Roy Thomas also comes on the book. But I kind of think that th that uh, just seeing the patterns and, and her appearances, it's like, I wonder if Don really, really just wanted to draw this character and wanted her included in a bunch of different You're things. You're probably right. <laughs> he does like to draw this vampy females. Yeah, and it's not the same as the Wasp or Scarlet Witch, because Scarlet Witch is more reserved and um, and Wasp is is a confident person who doesn't rely on her image in order to to uh, get things done. And so that's uh, such a different... It's the acting from Black right. Widow is so different from the other two female characters that are in this book. Right. She's got this this aura of glamour. Yeah. You know, to be to better manipulate all these guys to go do whatever she wants them to do. Uh, okay, so and now th this is the period where Black Widow is pretty much a reoccurring character. She is in every, almost every issue from now until issue uh, around 47 or so. And so some of these ones we're going to plow through uh, because they're just excerpts and some of them we're going to focus a little bit more on. Uh, but we're going to talk about issue number 30 next, which is the All second right. part of this story here. It's called Frenzy in a Far Off Land. And uh, in this issue, the fight that started in the first one with Power Man, Swordsman, and everything, it, it continues. And in this issue, Natasha has a change of heart. She right. The brainwashing is wearing off. Yeah. Which is good. It's good for everybody. Uh, her costume's a little bit different. In the last issue, uh, she came back and she has this costume that's... B the highlights are blue. It's, I'm sure it's just a black costume, but the highlights are blue. And the fishnet, you can see the, the flesh tone underneath gives it a mm -hmm. much more of a, a bathing suit kind of a look. But in this issue, the fishnets are gray, which gives it more of a, a full body suit kind of a look. In fact, the whole costume I... it doesn't have any blue highlights at all. It's all gray. Yeah, okay, so the, the the brainwashing wears off, and so she's able to assist Hawkeye in uh, saving everybody in the end. And that's uh, that's really the, the result here. She kind of is missing from most of this issue, and then she kind of just pops up at the very end and helps take out, uh, helps save the day, and then our story is over. Yep. Or <laughs> uh, Hawkeye just doesn't know what to think. I know, he's so messed up here. And if you go to page number 122, just the dialogue here between the two of them, uh, it's just like, Hawkeye, wait, where are you going? Back to the Avengers, where I belong. I, I came to my senses, the brainwashing wore off. Brainwashing? Wha what? <laughs> you mean, oh, you didn't think I'd harm you, would you? And it's just like, all of a sudden, both of these characters who were on completely opposite sides, and like Hawkeye doesn't know what to think, he hates her, and then he loves her, and that's like, kind of like their relationship throughout this entire book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it is. <laughs> yeah. Over and over, it's like, you're a traitor. I'm not a traitor. 
<laughs> but yeah, if we go on to the next issue, it's an ex- excerpt from Avengers number thirty-two, and basically, it, it's just um, it is it's just Natasha uh, popping in to say hi, and like yeah, pretty much that's all it is. With yep. And just to show them that they have they they have kind of an ongoing relationship now that's happening off panel. We don't actually see it, they, but they're going on dates and they're going out for dinner or whatever. And um, I think that's what's going on here, at least. Yeah. Um. But but he does say things like, no, actually, that's not at this point yet. Um. Black Widow comes into the room and Hawkeye's not in his mask, and he's like, even without your mask, I'd know you anywhere. This is kind of um taking the these the relationship to the next level, I guess, in a sense. Uh, we don't have the mask to hide behind, so they can actually yeah. have a, a, a more personal relationship. And of course, Black Widow's wearing a mask, but she didn't used to have a mask. So at, at this point, also Hawkeye's secret identity is a secret from everybody. Not even we, the reader, know that his real name is Clint Barton. <laughs> Oh, we don't know that yet. <laughs> no, we don't. That doesn't come until yeah, a little we later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that's, let's see. And we also have an excerpt from uh, pages 33. And again, it's a, it's just a little brief kind of a um, Black Widow comes in and, and helps save the day for, for something that's going on. She literally just pops through a window and, <laughs> and takes out the bad right. guy. <laughs> But this is the first time we've seen her actually working with the Avengers. Yes, and this actually leads directly into the next issue because um, issue number 36, uh, Hawkeye wants Black Widow to be accepted into membership, into Avengers membership. And this is something that I guess the Avengers take very seriously because they say we can't just say yes, we have to get a we have to have a vote. Uh, we have to talk about this and have a special meeting and we should probably try and contact Iron Man and Thor and and right away Giant Man Hank he says you know what my vote's already no like we can get this off the table we're not going to have a majority rule here uh, because she's literally tried to kill us <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> I mean he does have a point <laughs> yeah I, I can't really blame any of them for not fully trusting her but on the flip side, didn't Hawkeye try to kill them too? He's at least tried to kill Iron Man yeah. two times. And Scarlet Witch and, and Quicksilver were on the Brotherhood of Evil right. Mutants They're with Magneto. Mutants. Yep. <laughs> so it's like they, they're they not the best people either. It's like, why are they so down, or at least Hank? He was He was so, you know, okay with having Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver join the team, but not Black Widow. It's like, it seems like she's just getting the short end of the stick here. And Hank himself has had his his troubles and ups and downs, so you know <laughs> may, maybe he shouldn't be the one to judge. <laughs> yeah, at this point that, he's this, still this pretty. This one thing stupid. I love about Captain America is he believes in second chances. Yes, yeah, but that uh, doesn't end up having any sort of sway with Giant Man, unfortunately. No. <laughs> This is the first issue where Roy Thomas is doing the scripting. Stanley has, has, I think he's still writing the plots, um, but he's handed over the scripting duties over to Roy, um, who is mm-hmm. actually doing a lot of work on a lot of Marvel titles at this time. He's the he's the new young guy who's come in. And uh, and yeah, so in this issue, Black Widow tries to aid the team when they are uh, when they're infiltrated by these shape shifting androids, but she doesn't have exactly the the same level of trust like we said with uh, the other Avengers, and so she kind of just stands to the side and observes what's going on and watches all of these people uh, one by one kind of get captured <laughs> by these right. by these androids. Very calculating, just kind of I'm going to assess the situation and you know then decide what's the best yep. course of action. Um, yeah, and that's that's really the only role she plays. I mean, there's so much that happens in this issue, but as far as Black Widow's concerned, she is just kind of there watching. She, uh, even on like if you go to page 148, which is page 18 of this issue here, uh, she's stuck to the ceiling observing. She's not going right. to get involved quite yet. Which is smart, you know, to wait for your moment when you're one person against, you know, a whole big group of bad guys. But, yes, it's, it's very calculating. That many other characters would have just, oh, I've got to help the Avengers and just rushed in and done something. Yeah. So if we can go on to the next issue here, number 37. This one's to, to conquer a Colossus. With a recolored cover. With a recolored cover. Yeah, I mean, all these covers have uh, have have uh, some nice restoration to them. Yeah. Uh, 
That one looks pretty much like the the original does, though. I think the coloring job is. What is it? I think it's the same, but it's just a. Um, it's just up, updated with the you know with the restoration that the rest of this book yeah. has. The rest this book actually has some really nice restoration all throughout it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here at the very beginning of this issue, Captain America and Black Widow, the two remaining Avengers or sort of Avengers that are left standing, uh, get taken out by the bad guys, and they're all placed in these cylinder tubes. Except Black Widow is not because she's not technically an Avenger, so they didn't expect her to be there. So they don't have a properly designed glass cylinder for her to go in. So they just lock her up um, and uh, cast her aside. Mm-hmm. Now, through the rest of this issue. The Avengers free themselves. I think that this was a, an incredibly wasted situation or a wasted opportunity to further Black Widow's character and have her kind of come into the good graces of the Avengers by having her save everybody. Because if she's not the in a cylinder, what was the point of making a point of her in the story of not being in a cylinder? Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Although in a different kind of way, she, she sort of it did end up saving the day. Yep. By threatening Ixar. Right. Yes, that's true. You know, Hawkeye yep. threatened him. And he's like, well, you're an Avenger. You don't kill. And she's like, you know, I'll kill you. <laughs> and I, th- I thought that was very, very interesting for a, a Silver Age story to have the heroes triumph with a death threat. I mean, right. usually they triumph by being moral, you know, morally superior and more compassionate than than the bad guy. Yeah, that's true. So I, I, I thought that was very odd for this, this time. And that's neat. And I think that is partly... Like Roy Thomas coming in, being the new fresh blood, like he's, he, sure, he grew up on the golden age and the early silver age of Marvel, but he's also ushering in this new era that's going, that's taking Marvel into some different directions. And this is one of the early signs of that, I think. That, and that's a very mm-hmm. good point to bring up. She does save the day by manipulating and threatening uh, in a way that the other Avengers would not do. And that actually comes to bite her in the butt in, a, in, a, in the next issue. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, the Avengers real, realize that she saved the day, but they don't know how she saved the day. And, Hawkeye was the only one who heard that. Yep. And because he's in love with her, he's not going to say anything about it. Uh Okay, you want to? Should we go on to the next one here? The we can talk about sure. issues the 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 excerpts from issues thirty eight and thirty nine together. So in thirty eight, Hank and Hawkeye are just arguing about making Black Widow an Avenger, and <laughs> it's a little more than just arguing. Flat out kidnaps her. <laughs> well, yeah, they're fighting. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> yeah. knock down, drag out fighting, and yep. then you know, rather than just call her on the phone and and give her a job offer. Uh, Shield actually knocks Natasha out and kidnaps her. <laughs> says, "Okay, you want to work for us?" So remember how I was saying that uh, once Roy Thomas comes into the picture, uh, she her character goes in a different direction. Yes. For some p- time now, the Black Widow's been in and out of Hawkeye's life or whatever, and it's like. I think my personal opinion, and I ha- if I ever talk to Roy again uh, about Avengers specifically, I'll ask him this. It's like, I don't think that he was a fan of Black Widow. I think that he didn't really know what to do with the character. He, he came on the book, and she was part of the team, uh, in a sense, and he didn't really want her to be there. So the first one of the first things he does when he gets full writing capabilities or permissions is he sends her with S.H.I.E.L.D., gets her out of the picture. Well, at least he gave her something interesting to do, you know, yep. even if it's mostly off camera, he could have just, you know, had her retire or killed her off or yeah, gotten rid true. of her in some way that was not very interesting for a story. Well, and I wonder if he felt like he kind of had to keep her around because really he's kind of the biggest motivation for Hawkeye right now. And mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, got to keep her around for, for a little bit because she, she does stick around. I mean, she appears in several of the issues leading up to uh, um, till to w- where she departs, and but she is just not an active participant now she doesn't need the avengers um the membership anymore so that was kind of a a wasted couple of issues (laughs) of all that fighting and stuff (laughs) right (laughs) i don't know end up they're fighting over that hard and she just ends up getting another job instead yep Uh, i do like this aspect of her joining shield though uh this is a Mm -hmm. at the time shield was a fairly new book still 
Uh, I think we're into the Storenko issues by now, so it's been around for a little while, but they haven't really done any active recruiting or anything like that. It's, it's really just Nick Fury and his agents that they've established in the book. And Captain America drops by every so often to have an adventure, but this is kind of the first character that they really go out of their way to say, we want you to be on our team uh, and be and work for us and be a spy. And it, it suits her. It suits her skill set and her mindset yep. to work for S.H.I.E.L.D. rather than the Avengers. Yeah, I think so. And, I, and it's also just uh, out of necessity because they want her to return back to communist China and you know, resume her, her, her role or her post or whatever you want to call it uh, behind the, they call it the bamboo curtain, which is, I don't know if that's an actual term, <laughs> like iron it is, curtain. I, but I've heard it before. Yeah. yeah. It just seems it, ridiculous. It was, well, you know, it's to, to convey the, the secrecy of a communist nation, but yeah. Russia had the iron curtain. And so China had the bamboo curtain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, this issue is it's membership voting day also, and she just doesn't show up for the vote because she's kidnapped. And so they just kind of drop it and nothing. I mean, at the very end um, of the issue, Black Widow says, you know, I'm out of here. I I don't <laughs> right. I don't want to have anything to do with this. I'm going back. Um, don't worry about me. And Hawkeye's mad or whatever. And then then we get this another excerpt from issue number thirty nine. Poor old Hawkeye again. Is she a traitor or not? Does she love me or is she she just manipulating me? Poor guy. Yeah, and all of the Avengers, even even Goliath at this point, Hank Pym says, you know what, maybe I was a little too hard on her. Uh, And so now he's having second thoughts. A little too late. Sorry about that. But (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. But we just get these three pages to show that uh, she's gone on her mission. And that's about it. Yeah. Stealing submarine plans. Yeah. And then uh, we carry on to issue number 41, and we have, there, there's kind of two storylines going on here, and th- we only get the pages for one storyline in here. We get pages 1 to 7, and then 11 to 13, and then page 20. And this is the story about Hercules and Hawkeye, which is, I, this, it's a great combination between the two of them. They're kind of funny together. <laughs> but they... Uh, uh, what's going on here? Um, we we see what's we see Black Widow in with the Chinese communists with uh, Colonel Ling, mm-hmm. and apparently he knows the whole time that she's a double agent. So he traps her inside his greatest invention, which he calls the Psychotron. Psychotron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this is an this is an apparatus that will bring your nightmares to reality, or at least you will perceive them while you were awake. And uh, and it will drive you mad. Yep, it's it's a thing with potential. I kind of would like to see more of it. Yeah, yeah, just um, to see what the what the heroes' nightmares are, what they're really afraid of. Yeah, so this is her first mission, and it kind of only lasts two seconds. It really is too bad that she doesn't get to do anything more because her her cover apparently was never really a cover in the first place. So mm-hmm. she is immediately captured and and. Um, and in the next issue here, we find out that um, Nick Fury contacts them and says, uh, "Guys, we need you to save Black Widow." Uh, or is, is it Nick Fury that says it? Or um, let me see here. Uh, according to this, Black Widow is prisoner. There's a dispatch. Yeah, I guess there's a dispatch on the last page of this issue um, that says that Black Widow's being held captive behind the, the curtain. I think that this, I, I can't remember exactly. The Chinese send the Avengers that intentionally to draw them to uh, to their country where they will face right. the big, big bad guy in the next issue. Of course, Hawkeye says, well, I got to do it my way. Yeah. Because she's so hot-headed. Yep, yep. He's going to go after her for sure. And at this point, this issue here, I believe, is drawn by... uh, Oh, no, this is still Don Heck. So this is the very last Don Heck issue that we will get uh, with Black Widow. Uh, Starting in the next issue, John Buscema, a brand new new guy, new to the Marvel bullpen, uh, takes up the penciling duties for Avengers. And... Uh This is kind of, I think, this is this is kind of the end for Black Widow at this point, even though we get a little bit of his uh, of her backstory with Red Guardian, uh, because now I think if my theory is correct about Don Heck really liking the character of Black Widow, now he's off the book, so Roy doesn't really have a reason to keep her around anymore. So she'll like he'll finish up this story here, and then she kind of just pops up here and there. 
Uh, in fact, um, in fact, Roy takes her out of the superhero game altogether <laughs> at the end of this. Yeah, issue. Did, didn't like that, but yeah. So, do you want to tell us about the Red Guardian? The Red Guardian. Well, he's in China for some reason. Uh, so they enter the Red Guardian. Uh, well, Hercules and Hawkeye go to save Black Widow. Of course, the Red Guardian has got to fight Captain America because when you've got characters who actually represent nations and they're the nations are at odds then really the two of them have got to fight and that's all there is to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, i'm really confused why he's in china though i mean they just say when they introduce him as colonel ling is talking here saying though born in in your countries this is talking to a soviet agent he's now our foremost defender because <laughs> they're just swapping yeah. agents back and forth well, in yeah, the communist countries, I guess. <laughs> exactly, and I don't exactly know. There is there is a weird relationship between the two. We don't get a full the full story about why they're working together, but I think that they are both developing the Psychotron together. Like, they want to destroy all of democracy, so they're they're teaming up their resources so that they can take down all of the, the, the democratic countries. And so, so uh, Ling brings the Psychotron and the Russian general brings the Red Guardian and the two of those forces are supposed to be enough to stop the Avengers but of course it is not and it's uh, it's kind of actually thanks to Black Widow again she pops up actually that's mm-hmm. not in this issue that's going to be in the next issue but um, but she, she ends up saving the day as well. The important thing to know about this issue here is that once Black Widow is captured, once Hawkeye and Black Widow are captured, the Red Guardian kind of spills the beans on who he is. Yep. Breaking poor Hawkeye's heart. Yeah. What? You didn't tell me that you that you had a husband? <laughs> it's really none of your business, Hawkeye. Um, <laughs> yes, I had a life before I met you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, everybody thought she, and in fact, even Black Widow thought that he was dead. So there's, there was really no point in bringing that up before. And she's a very secretive person anyway. So Right, right. Yeah. But yeah. Although you'd think he'd wondered why she's called the Black Widow. Oh, that's a great point. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she's, she's literally a widow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I that's uh that's the revelation. I wonder for me if that's right how here. the Red Guardian even came about. Is they were thinking, hey, you know, she's a black widow. Shouldn't she have <laughs> a husband that she thought she was that was dead? <laughs> that could be. That's that's so funny that her name has that double meaning. That ah oh, man, didn't didn't clue in on that at all. So <laughs> thanks for that, Pierce. <laughs> Well, uh, and that takes us through to the next issue number here, 44, called The Valiant Also Die. We get another full issue. and Except right where we left off. Yeah, literally right where we left off. Some really nice artwork here from John Buscema. I, I, and uh, inks by Vince Coletta, who I don't normally like, but in this issue he does a fantastic job. I like the way that they draw um, they, that they draw Natasha here. It's it's got the same sort of glamour, but it's a it's a slight step away from the more of the the I don't know the '40s kind of a glamour, It'll, bringing it a little bit more into the '60s. Yeah, he changed her hair a little bit and they made her a little more up to date. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, so they end up busting down the place. There's a really confusing moment in this issue here uh, when uh, so all of the Avengers kind of get saved and, and Captain America is facing off against the Red Guardian. All right, and, this is when they fight, not last issue. Yeah, and there's a part part here where Black Widow. It's on page two hundred and thirty. If you're reading the issue, uh, it's on page sixteen where Black Widow crawls up the wall. And she tries to uh, she tries to destroy the psychotron, mm-hmm. and she lets off a zap. But then, in the very next panel, Hawkeye uses an arrow and pushes one of the 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 communist guards into another one, and that guy fi- fires wildly, and that starts the chain reaction that actually des- destroys everything. So Black Widow doesn't end up doing what she set out to do. Oh, I guess you're right. Um, and yeah, and the, in the last panel, it says. Um, our host's little pop gun must hit something flammable and then that destroys everything it's like really they couldn't give black widow the win there because like <laughs> that would have been yeah. she she you know that we're we're wondering the entire time is she isn't she a traitor that's the whole point of this story is that you know we don't know if she's 
if she's like what side she's on especially now that she's reunited with her russian husband what's this going to do with to her and just took a bullet for her even yeah and it would have been the perfect opportunity to say no i am i am with the americans i am loyal to them now i i am the one who destroyed the psychotron but that doesn't act, act, end up happening I guess you're right and and roy thomas doesn't like her <laughs> he wouldn't give her that moment <laughs> i guess i don't know uh it is cool to see the red guardian not being loyal to his country and being loyal to his feelings to to love instead and and saving black widow's life that's cool mm-hmm. um yeah. and boy has her mind been messed with or what you know we find out that she was yeah. brainwashed in order to to pass a lie detector test and say that she actually was a, a loyal communist agent and that would have been shield brainwashing her right so does she even know at this point who she is or who whose side she's on as I don't much know. as she's been messed with and then in the end is like also her whole life has been a lie because her husband is alive and one of the reasons it, it says here in, in the last page we got a little bit of a glimpse into her past um, he was a space pilot, one of the Russian pilots in a secret spa- uh, secret mission, and apparently his plane went down. And a guy comes and says, I must inform you that your husband Alexei has been killed today when his experimental rocket exploded. However, you will be glad to know he died a hero, testing weapons for use against our enemies. And she says, if only I could do something to be worthy of his memory. And he says, perhaps there is something. And that's when she becomes an agent for the Russian communists. And that's where her story kind of starts so mm-hmm. it's like her whole purpose her whole, everything is is it has been manipulated and has been a lie yeah even before they came up with the red room as her origin she's just been manipulated left and right by everybody yeah and so at this point roy thomas says okay she's going to hang up her fishnet stockings and she's not going to be a superhero anymore she's giving that all, all up she's leaving it behind her and so, yeah, the next few issues that we have in this book are just excerpts from Avengers number 43, 46, and 47, where she literally is just recuperating in the hospital and then shows up to say hi to the Avengers, saying, uh, I'm giving up my uh, life of superheroics. And then in the final one, um, Hawkeye and her have a little bit of a fight because she can no longer be an active part of her uh, of Hawkeye's story because she's not a superhero anymore. I mean, she had to know that wasn't going to last. Though. I mean, she's just not cut out for, you know, to be this housewife. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and so this is um, this is like a few months go by, and she is in like five or six panels. And now... And not doing much. And not doing much at all. And then we jump ahead to issue number 57. So we jump from 47 to 57. It's almost a year later. It's like 16 months since she gave up being a superhero. So like Roy hasn't used her at all. At all. Right. And now we're getting into Avengers number 57. And she says, uh, Shields drafted me back into the spy world. I'm going on a mission. And so she leaves and Hawkeye's like, I got more important things to deal with than this right now. And like, he's upset because she, he hasn't seen her in a long time. They have a strained relationship or whatever. And, 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 and Black Widow leaves and that's all we see. And Mm -hmm. in the book, the very next page, it jumps to Nick Fury saying, "Uh, I sent Natasha to the Caribbean and I haven't heard from her since. Can you guys help me out? And this is where we need to insert Captain Marvel number 12. Our epic Marvel podcast bonus feature. Yeah. Uh, why they didn't include this issue is beyond me because... They should. They we, should have. We have the issue here where it says, S.H.I.E.L.D. sending me on a mission, and it has the part where Nick Fury says she was on a mission, but now she's missing. But Captain Marvel number 12 is the actual mission. Why wouldn't we get the actual mission <laughs> right. in a Black Widow epic collection? <laughs> <laughs> not even the pages. Not yeah. even if they didn't want to include the full issue, give us the excerpts that she's in at least. And they didn't need to have the full issue because actually she doesn't interact with Captain Marvel at all. Her story is completely separate. Right. I don't even know why it's in the pages of Captain Marvel. <laughs> really. Well, I, I actually kind of like when they do things like that because it, it enriches the world. You know, it shows you that even while you're reading Captain Marvel yeah. and you're focused on him and what he's doing, that yeah. this this whole universe is full of other characters who have 
their own things to do. That's very true. And she doesn't have a proper spot of her own. So, you know, why why not have her in Captain Marvel? There's, And this one issue, Captain Marvel comes back to Earth after being away for a while uh, to resume his civilian identity as Professor Lawson. And there's an experimental rocket that's going to be blasting off in the Caribbean and somebody's going to stop it. And a mysterious figure is sending androids to stop the missile launch. And S.H.I.E.L.D. has sent... Natasha to stop the guy who's sending the androids and and then she gets captured so she's actually not very good at her missions she's been on two big missions for but shield she did now disable the the manslayer right it oh just yeah ground yeah. to a halt while it was fighting captain marvel and he had no idea right why. that's true but then she does get captured in the end as well yeah and she gets captured yeah so and and le- leaves us hanging there. Yeah, I mean. exactly. And if you didn't, if you're only reading Captain Marvel, it's like you don't know what happens to her. They don't say, "Hey, find out what happens to Black Widow in Avengers number 57." Uh, it just, Which they usually do. Yeah, they just don't. They just don't say it at all. Now, there's two reasons why I think this issue should have been included. One of the reasons is because it's the actual mission, and they've literally left out a chapter of the story. But the other mm-hmm. is that this is the one time that her story. It's not really dependent on Hawkeye. Uh, right, right. For for the most of this this first half of this book here, this epic collection, her motivations and her reason for being are all centered around Hawkeye. But now she gets a chance to break out from that, and they don't include that story in the book. And the story that we do include in the book, the the part where she's captured, is a Hawkeye story. <laughs> <laughs> It's the story where Hawkeye feels like his bow and arrow is not good enough in order to save Black Widow, so he steals the Pym Particles, and he becomes a, a super-powered Goliath. superhero yeah, named Goliath. And <laughs> really, he saves Black Widow's life. Yeah, pretty much. He had to come in there all giant Goliath yep. and fight We've- the big old android thing. We find out that the mysterious person that in the Captain Marvel issue was actually the Mad Thinker, and the Mad Thinker has teamed up with Egghead, and um, and Puppet Master, and, oh yeah, and the Puppet Master who have been now, is, doing is stuff. Is this Alicia's another... stepfather, yes. Puppet Master, because he looks different? Yeah, Gene Colan had. I wouldn't a... have recognized him. Yeah, Gene Colan had a very specific way of drawing. He didn't want to to follow the the howdy doody type of look of the Puppet Master that Jack Kirby did, so he made him look like a normal person. Um, this okay. story, his the puppet master was in Namor the Submariner, which Colin was also drawing, and he looks like this here as well. And that's okay. st- so these three characters were actually doing different things in different books, and the conclusion to their storyline is this issue right here, uh, which is is kind of nothing. They don't really do anything except send a big monster, and then Hawkeye takes it out, and the the, the day is saved. Except there's a. Um, they're, they're going to use satellites to destroy the planet, which is what we'll, we'll talk about in the next issue. But <laughs> right, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know that about uh, Puppet Master. I was wondering if it was the same character <laughs> or not because he, you know, he doesn't have that weird painted doll kind of a look. Yep. All right, so pick up on Avengers sixty four with dealing with the threat of the giant space station. Yeah, and you gotta love these splash pages. We haven't really talked about oh, yeah. the art in this at all, but this uh, man, Gene Colan. These two issues of Gene Colan here are are really really great. They're unlike any of the other issues that we see in this book because it's primarily Don Heck, and he's got a very classic Golden Age kind of a style. And then we get a few issues from Romita, who is early in his career, so they're not the, the kind of the really stylized Romita that we're used to. And then we have Colan. And he's inking his own work. Oh no, George Klein is inking his work here, and it just mm-hmm. looks fantastic. This this, it this does. splash page. I just love this huge yeah, splash page. So two, good. Two page splash page with the the title of the issue, you know, as part of it. And I like just love this, his his compositions in every panel are just great. They they're full and mm-hmm. full of dy- dynamic positions and camera angles, and but none of it looks crowded. He's got lots of room for the words, and it just it just works really really well. Mm-hmm. 
And in this issue, the um, egghead is, yeah, he's using his satellites to blow up planet. And, um, but before they do that, there, somebody comes to give some secret information uh, to, to let them know where the, you know, how they can get to the satellite. It happens to be Clint Barton's brother, Barney Barton. And here's where we find out. They don't include these pages in this epic collection, but this is the issue where we find out Clint's real name. And th- this is where it suffers by reading just these patchy bits of stories because you know i wanted to know more about that i mean yeah. i've got the i've got the avengers issues and essentials but I'm like oh clint shifty brother showed up yeah and like the, the rocket blasts off and they don't bother telling us the resolution of this story in this issue it's like it's i know they they in fact, it was a totally pointless issue to put in here. Black Widow is here. She is in a few panels. She doesn't really say anything. She doesn't do anything. We could have left this issue out completely. Um, yeah, she really just shows up just to say, oh, we're never going to see each other again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and no, no, that's the, that's the last. If you're looking at page 267, that's Avengers number 76. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, she doesn't even do that much. In Which this is one, then. several months next later. Next to nothing. <laughs> yeah. And she, yeah, so she last appears in issue number 64, and then issue number 76, like a year later, she pops up again just to say, I will, I'll never see you again. Goodbye. And Hawkeye, what does he say here? He says, okay, lady, I'll let you go. And I'm, I won't try to stop you. And all you got to say is that you never loved me. And she says, okay, if that's what you want, I'll say it. I never loved you. Never. And then she's gone. And Hawkeye. yep, so and that's kind of the end of the Hawkeye Black Widow story right there. That's where we leave yep. it off. And then a couple months later, Black Widow will show up in the pages of Amazing Spider Man and we'll get a, a, a total makeover and we'll go off in a different direction. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for our episode today. We're not going to get into the next part of her story. But this, yeah, give me your general impressions of Black Widow up until this point. What were the things you liked? What are the things you don't like? Uh, well, I, I like that she's she's got more agency, you know, than a lot of Silver Age characters and uh, is, is more in charge of her destiny as much as she can be while being manipulated by everyone and everything. Uh, I I don't like that she's so cold and calculating. Um, I, I have some sympathy for her because she has been so manipulated and her her moral compass just <laughs> is all over the place, you know, and you can't really blame her for that based on her background. And I, I think that's why she keeps gravitating towards teams and organizations, but then keeps leaving them too because she, right. she doesn't trust herself she knows that her moral compass is screwed up so she you know she kind of wants somebody to tell her what to do and put her skills to work but she doesn't trust anyone else either she doesn't trust any organization because so many have betrayed her in one way or another that she you know she ends up leaving all these organizations but then going back have you read the Amazing Adventures issues that are following this? Yes. Okay, so you have an idea of where her character is going. I, I haven't read these yet, so I don't know uh, where they're going to take her and how they're going to deal with that, uh, what, what you're talking about here, about her uh, being... She's kind of just a soldier, I guess, in a sense. And uh, we'll see where that goes. But yeah, I liked I liked the concept of her. I just think that, unfortunately, again, if my theory is correct about Roy, that she just wasn't given the, the time to shine. She wasn't given a good chance to to really define her as a, as a, you know, a Marvel, a staple of the Marvel Universe at this point. Mm-hmm. But she's kind of an odd character, to, a, a little difficult to write, I think, because she's not a traditional superhero. Yeah, that's true. And I like that. It's kind of hard to find her niche. That's kind of Marvel's thing, though, when they started in the Golden Age. It was like, let's make superheroes that are not quite superheroes. And this True. follows that quite well, her or- origins on that. I like that there was a lot of mystery to her character, and they kind of would slowly peel back little bits of it here and there. Um, that aspect is great. But I think the lack of an origin story and this the, the fact that she was underutilized, uh, you know, for reading this book, it's not that great of a read, you know? Yeah, I mean, just having so such a patchy read with these little partial stories, it, it's not a great reading experience. Yeah. I, on the plus side, though, I, I I do love to start at the beginning with the character and true watch her evolve. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think that that's kind of the only real benefit to this collection is that we get the evolution of her character, which you, you know, I recently just read through all of the 60s of Avengers. And so I've I read all of these Black Widow stories wow. in its proper sequence. And, you know, it's even, you even get the sense even more of uh, how how mistreated, I guess, her character was through the writing because she, like, issues and issues go by and she just doesn't show up and then she'll pop up for just a one scene and then j- disappear again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's that. Next time we will read the second half of this book, which includes Amazing Spider-Man number 86, Amazing Adventures 1 to 8, and Daredevil 81. So that's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Full issues, not just partial issues. Well, sort of. I mean, the, well, amazing, okay, the adventures, amazing Adventures are half issues. Yeah, <laughs> they're still short <laughs> stories. But at least it's like the Black Widow is the solo main character of those stories. So I think there will be a little right. bit more meat to them and we'll have some more things to discuss. So join us next week when we talk about that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of that kind of stuff. And you can join our Epic Collection group on Facebook, where both Pierce and I are um, active members. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for today. So let's uh, just sign off. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Right. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me, Curtis. Curtis.